If you've been missing, oh great. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So also, uh, in Tears of Vision, if you've been hankering for a piece of rare loot uh, that you haven't been able to acquire, uh, we're going to start with rare heroic jewelry from Tears of Vision on a new merchant. So we want you to be able to uh, gear up your characters and prepare, prepare for the expansion as well. So look for that coming soon. Our very first PvP deathmatch zone, it's a six on six. It's based on a Rowan Thier theme, and what's really cool about this zone, uh, other than the obvious, um, you're gonna have to watch uh, not only other players, but there's gonna be traps and power-ups in this environment, and not only that, they're gonna move around this board. So we're really excited about this coming out soon, this fall. And because we've been adding a lot of status items and plan to do more, we thought it'd be cool if you could sell your collection items for status. So that's gonna be coming soon and I'm sure every broker just saw the loss and purchase of every collection item on them. Um, we're super excited too, Grandmaster Spells. We're gonna be offering you the ability to research and scribe all of them at every level in the game. So that's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, yay! Um, and then of course, uh, on November 9th, our official 10th anniversary, uh, we're adding new content to our Heroes Festival, of course, um, but we're super excited to be able to announce that our 10-year veterans it's, will get... <laughs> you will get a free Isle of Refuge prestige home. Technically, it's the 11th item. Um, and uh, in addition to that, you're gonna get a starter population pack that goes with it with some characters that are reminiscent of the original Isle of Refuge. So possibly Bladefin the Shark might be in that pack. So yeah, so that's coming. And as always, we're always looking into the future, very ambition, ambitious team as you know. The Whoa. deity system, <laughs> great. Yeah, we love the deity system, um, and of course it hasn't had uh, some personal attention for a while. So next year we're gonna be updating it with miracles and blessings and perhaps the opportunity for you to worship more than one god. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, oops, I went backwards, all right. So um, we, we do love the idea of our public quest system because we want our world to feel alive. Um, so we want to redesign it. It's a very complicated system for our designers. So we're going to make it easier to put quests in the game and also we're going to focus some time on making your contribution rewarding. So that'll be coming next year. And we'll tackle fabled Echoes of Fade War next year. The first two we'll be looking at are Inner Sanctum and Crypt of Veldun. Cross-server dungeons. Yeah, so we're super excited about this. Yeah. So the cool thing is, what this starts with is a lot of back-end work um, it, for us to be able to do this that will provide benefits for the game uh, on every server. So improvements, benefits, and definitely for the development team, some benefits. So we'll be doing that back-end work uh, this winter, uh, and we'll try and get to this as soon as we possibly can, because obviously we're super excited about it. That's me, that's me being excited. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, after 10 incredible years, um, as I said last night, our 11th expansion, launching on 11.11, Altar of Malice, and this is perhaps some of the, our favorite uh, key art we've had. So, um, yeah, so, main character, that's Lannis Tavill. Woo! Yeah. It's always good to have a badass like her around to carry our incredible story, and there's a lot more detail in this story that we'll get into here. So I'll give you the high level stuff. So we are raising the level cap to 100, as most of you probably know. It's not just for adventurers, but for trade skillers too. <laughs> um, and uh, as we promised earlier this year, we said we wanted to focus our time on the expansion this year and give you a bigger expansion, a bigger one than we've done in quite some time, and we are doing that. We've got 14 heroic zones, six raids, six advanced solo zones, two full contested zones, two amazingly beautiful overlands that are built in our brand new terrain tool, which the artists are gonna show you, and four new avatars of the gods that are going to be linked to this expansion specifically. 
And prestige abilities to level 100, we've got a couple of examples here for you. This one called Shadow is for brigands. It's going to allow a brigand to summon a shadow that's going to mimic some of your positional attacks for additional damage for the duration of the spell. So that's a cool uh, new functionality we have, as well as this one. This is for illusionists. It's called temporal mimicry. This is going to allow an illusionist to target an ally, an ally a wizard, says, let's say, a spellcaster. And for the duration of this spell, I'm going to imitate the spells you cast. So a wizard casts Ice Comet, I cast it too. Yeah, so for the duration of that spell, yeah. So, <laughs> I can say thank you to our systems team tomorrow. So uh, in the systems panel, uh, uh, our systems team is going to go over uh, some of these in detail, so you won't want to miss that. They've got some really cool stuff coming for you. Trade Skill Apprentice, we are adding to this expansion. It's going to offer you some of the best in slot items in the game. Loot to play your way. So last year at SOE Live, uh, the team talked about our itemization Magna Carta, and we want to continue with that, which is we want to give you a great variety of loot so you can customize your character for the way you like to play. So we will continue that. We'll be extending the Grand Masters to all the spells in our expansion as well to level 100. And if you want to upgrade those further, we're going to have rare ancient spell scrolls available in the expansion. Here's an example that may, may or may not make it into the game. We'll see. <laughs> it looks good to us. <laughs> and of course, uh, Every time we release an expansion, we usually have a couple of features that go live around the same time. So, of course, guild level to 100 seemed an obvious one to us, and with that, you'll be able to upgrade a lot of your amenities. And we're super excited to, again, see, this is me being super excited. Um, so, uh, we are thrilled to announce a brand new playable race. The Erican. Yeah, they're amazing. So these beautiful Dragon King creatures, you have customizable horns based on uh, patterns from famous dragons in our game. You have unique combat animations, which are wing attacks. Uh, you're going to be able to choose your scale color, your hair color, your wing color. Uh, and your wings are going to advance over time, not that you start with wee little sad wings. They're going to be cool the entire way through. But by level 85, your wings are going to be fully functional flying mount wings. So yeah, we're super excited about that, and they're beautiful. And so that's like the high-level overview of our expansion, uh, but we want to get into the meat and the dark, sinister nature of this expansion. So um, as you know, the world in Norath never stands still, so we thought we'd bring a storyteller onto the stage to tell you a tale of heroes and villains leading up to the Altar of Malice. I welcome Jeff the Bard. So many years, so many battles, countless days of wondering whether tomorrow was going to be our last, wondering when he'd strike, if he'd strike, and what would happen. Would it be fire and brimstone? Would the earth shake and tremble? Or would it be so fast we wouldn't feel anything at all. But no, it never happened like that. Oh, he struck at us, but he used proxies and puppets to do it. He used us against each other. The earth never trembled, but his plans always moved forward. And if you were savvy, you could see where it was all headed. Ages end, step by inevitable step. And so we fought. We kept fighting, and we never stopped. I was there to watch, to put pen to paper, and ensure that our story was told. To be sure that if we fell, someone else could pick up the pieces. And so I can tell the tale of how Cordon picked up the Swords of Destiny and held Karafirm off as Jorlak turned back time on Lucklin. But to truly understand, we have to start from the beginning. I know for me, once it was the end of the world, I was out of a job. There wouldn't be anybody left to tell stories to, and corpses don't pay coin for song. 
So when Antonia asked for heroes to step up, I joined the great multitudes of you already there. And Karafirm underestimated us. The worst thing he could have done was unite Norath against him. Instead of looking at Freeport as this weapon that Lucan used against us, they were our allies. Uneasy allies. Allies that would kill you just as soon as say hi to you. But we were working together for the first time in anyone's memory. And we pushed. We pushed through Velius. We pushed through Withered Lands. We pushed through Cobalt Scar. We pushed through Sky Shrine. We were winning. Carefrom could only watch as his awakened lost ground every step of the way. I sang songs for the troops. I sang songs for the heroes gathered there, not for some small pittance of coin, but because I was proud of what we'd done. I was finally part of something that mattered. But then it was all taken away from me. I'll never forget the sound Antonia made when Lucan tore the soul from her father's body. There was nothing left of him. That sound she made will haunt me until the last of my days. It marked the end of everything. Our leaders failed us. The new combine was shattered. Carefirm had moved into ether near itself, untouchable by mortal hands. His drakes relentlessly attacked our great cities. We, we were helpless. Except, you surprised me. You pushed the squabbling leaders aside. You made your own way. We broke the rules of Ethernir, defied Drenal in his very own plane. We flew up to Carefrom's front door, knocked on it, and didn't bother to wait for an answer. His shock troops fell, his Arakin fell, his great draconic generals fell. We showed the world what it meant to be a hero, to step up when our leaders were too busy fighting amongst themselves. I was there. I was there when Velkin convinced Rowan Thier to pick up his swords again. I was there when Jorlak figured out what the Chelsea Stone really meant. I was there when Yarlowin picked up Lifebringer and used it to keep that great prismatic worm at bay. When that day was over, who was victorious? You! Did Carefirm still stand that day? You! Did you fall to his breath? Or did you persevere through pain and anguish for the very future of Norath itself? Yeah. All of you here played some part. Let me hear your voices. Let me hear that you still stand. Let me hear from the heroes of Norath! We won that day. Age's end was not the ending any of us anticipated. It was not the end of Norath. It was not the end of anything other than care from himself. I can look up at Lucklin and know I will never see his shadow again. And now? Well, I find my hands idle now. There is an uneasy silence. One age ends and another begins, but what will it bring? What tales are still left to be told? I know this. Antonia will never forgive Lucan for what he did to her father. And I don't think Kinos will either. You can feel it in the air of our cities. One war ends, and another threatens to begin. She talked to me today. She told me a secret. And so tomorrow, I board a boat headed towards the shattered seas, towards the isle I once called a place of refuge. To do what? I cannot say. But be sure, I'll tell you all about it when I return. The cool thing is, you may not know, his name actually is Jeff Bard. <laughs> Yeah, kind of lucky, right? And there's going to be a quiz on that license later. <laughs> um, 
And so uh, now we want to take you deep into Altar of Malice. You're going to see a lot of incredible zones and characters. And to do that, I would like to invite Akil Hooper, creative director of EverQuest 2 and EverQuest, Tim Heidlar, art director, and Dave Brown, assistant art director to the stage, to tell you more about it. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right. Hi, everyone. So to give you a brief look into what we're, uh, where we're going in the Altar of Malice, uh, you're going to be, be traveling to the Shattered Seas at, at the behest of the uh, monarchs. Uh, you're traveling there to try and figure out why the sales of Far Seas Trading Company has gone silent and what happened to the emissaries from Kinos and Free, Freeport who were sent to broker a deal with them. While you're there, you'll stumble across a trail of destruction with a man named Captain Greymast at the leading edge. Your pursuit of gray mass will, leave you, will lead you overseas and volcanic islands, through besieged temples, forgotten temples, <laughs> and castles. And you'll stumble across the machinations of a demigod and a cult of forgotten priests. Your first stop in the, in the Shattered Seas is the Tranquil Sea and the Isle of Refuge. It is here where you witness firsthand the trail of destruction that sent gray mass on his guilty flight. Next, you'll travel to the island of Deathweave, <laughs> where a group called the Urzerak live in an uneasy peace with the pirates underneath them. Finally, the island of the Shin, where a group of pygmies live in an uneasy harmony with the dinosaurs that consume them. <laughs> Poor guys. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. All right. So first I'd like to mention that both Overland Zones you'll be seeing, this was the first, were created in our new terrain tool, which has allowed us to create better looking zones faster. We'll talk much more about that tomorrow at 10 that room, I think. Anyway, you start on the Isle of Refuge, as Akil said, and what we wanted to do here was take the original layout and a lot of the familiar landmarks and reimagine them against the new lore. We've got the Chieftain's Hut, the Mage Tower, which you kind of saw is blown to high hell. And of course, Bladefin Bay, where Bladefin may or may not still be. Then you travel to Deathweave Isle. Deathweave Isle is a lush and tropical landscape, home to the Urzerak. And finally, south to Shin. To Shin is a hostile and volcanic environment, um, home to some brand new massive creatures. Yeah, for this area, we want to give each zone its own unique inhabitants. So we'll have things such as these giant beasts here, roaming the lands. And also these awesome lava pygmies. What happens to them? They get eaten by dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's them. Yeah. yeah. Anything's always possible. The other half of the Shattered Seas are the Phantom Seas. It's here where you'll find Kithakor Forest. <laughs> A no haunted pressure. forest that is given over to the undead once night falls. You'll also find the cult of the primordial malice here, a group of priests and priestesses who are devoted to a child of hate. There's some more Kithakor. <laughs> and far above Kithakor, in just a moment here, you'll see Highhold. Highhold is the outpost of the Far Seas Trading Company in Norath and the heart of their operations. And far to the east lies Grimshales, a massive shard of Lucklin that slammed into the Phantom Seas and hides a forgotten temple deep in its bowels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, every time. Here we go. So the first thing we wanted to do with the Phantom Seas was to pedestal Highhold far above it. We saw Highhold is acting as somewhat of a lighthouse, a reference point for the Far Seas Empire. And below that, we have Kithakor. With Kithakor, we wanted to invoke that sense of uncertainty and confusion. If we took away your map and compass, would you get lost? Would you question or maybe fear what's around that corner? And then there's the Grim Shales. The Grim Shales was created entirely by the collision of the Shara Temple into the Shattered Seas. We've got fractured, uneven ground everywhere, ruins scattered from the collision, and something maybe below the surface, bowels, bowels. <laughs> Shra, the great temple and home to the four-armed Akivans, is the forgotten temple from the moon of Lucklin, the once-shattered moon of Lucklin, 
It crashed encapsulated into the phantom seas and hides dread secrets in its depths. This is gonna be fun. This is fun. All right, so that's clearly not the zone. But I had to explain a little bit because of what you saw might have looked a little bit different. So a bit of history here. Back during Velius, um, we decided to create our first multi-floored, fully tilted dungeon, the Tower of Frozen Shadow. It was actually just two degrees of tilt. It was a huge pain in the butt for both art and design. I'm still not sure if I'm friends with Carlos over there after doing that to him. <laughs> So apparently in a huge lapse in judgment earlier this year, we decided, hey, how about we take a classic pyramid-shaped dungeon, turn it upside down, and then ram it into the shattered seas and make sure it was fully playable. So we've got an upside down dungeon that's a pain in the ass as well. <laughs> as for what you'll find here, it's heavily based on the original, so you'll have to kind of explore to find out on your own. Yeah, and for this area, we actually, I mean, we don't want to show everything, so we want you actually to explore in this area and see some of the ancient creatures that we have waiting for you. Huge shinies. Yes. <laughs> Our next dungeon is Castle Highhold. Castle, Castle Highhold is currently under, under siege by the Achaevans. They're looking for someone or something protected by its walls. It is here where you'll begin to unravel, unravel Grey Mist's role in a devastation. You'll get all that furniture, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Pausing, wait for it. Hey, there we go. Don't want to go too far. So with high hold, from the exterior, we knew it acted as a beacon. But from the, from the interior, we wanted to feel impenetrable, defensive, yet homely with a, excuse me, with a rich, bustling courtyard and um, massive castle interior that was kind of reflective of the status of the Far Seas Empire. Now for this area, they're being taken over by the, the four-armed Akivan. But if that's not enough limbs for, to take you down, we also have the eight-limb Ursarak coming down now. <laughs> sound effects. <laughs> Where's Tom? Yeah, Tom's our sound effect guy. You'll see him at the art panel. Next, we have Broken Skull Bay, home to the Broken Skull Pirates. It is from here where the pirates launched their forays onto the seas of Norath. Led by the dread Captain Krasnok from his ship, the Hate's Fury, the pirates are a scourge on all the seas. <laughs> Twice I got to hit it. So this is the hidden base of the Broken Skull Pirates. They build vertically within the deep chasm, connecting their structures with scaffolding and bridges. We want it to feel like a, a pirate city. It's really communal. But of course, it's littered with all their pirate spoils. You can say booty. No. OK, can't say booty, sorry. <laughs> Zavith Loa is a volcanic underground cavern peopled by a lizardkin tribe called the Aluthoa. They've been driven to the surface where they terrorize the pygmies and the dinosaurs that the pygmies worship. It'll be up to you to explore the depths and find out what drove the lizardkin to the surface. So Zavithlo is our take on a journey to the center of the earth type dungeon. The idea here is it's its own unique ecosystem sustained by the hot molten center and cool watery surrounds causing everything to grow out of control. There's like a ton of cool alien-ish plant life only found here. And down here for NPCs, you will find more giant lizards, and you also find the Alathoa, the lizardkin, who have risen up and they're taking over everything in their path. Finally, we have the Ossuary of Malevolence, home to the cult of, Par of Primordial Malice. They are a tribe of priests and priestesses devoted to the demigoddess Lannis. They desecrate their bodies to, to show their love for their forgotten, fallen mistress. That's cool. 
So the ossuary was heavily inspired by those awesome bone churches of Europe. The idea here was that the bricks, walls, mortar, everything was made of the bones of the fallen enemies, sacrificial offerings brought to this place. We wanted the zone to feel like it had a sinister motive all on its own. Something's definitely going on here, but what? So each wing of the dungeon was created to answer a bit more of that puzzle. And in here, you'll find the primordial malice. These guys are doing ritual um, sacrifices to themselves to bring themselves to the undead. So to show that with their piercing bones through their arms, their bodies are scarred up as they scrape skin away from their tissue. Yeah, I definitely, you know, the reference would give me nightmares, so I can finally <laughs> sleep again now. <laughs> well, thank you all. That was just a brief look at some of the themes that we're we'll making up the zones and dungeons and the uh, altar of malice. I can't wait for you all to jump in and play beta with us, but now I'm going to welcome Holly back to the stage. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Oh. Stay where you are. I know they always try and run away on me. Um, yeah, so um, with that said, um, this expansion is still a work in progress. We have a ways to go, and we'll be starting beta probably uh, end of September, early October. Um, so look for invitations to that. We'd love to have you uh, help us with uh, testing it and getting a deeper look inside it. There's a lot of really cool stuff happening, I think, as you can see. So with that, I think we've got, um, we've got a couple prizes to give away. So when I said there was going to be a quiz after, I wasn't kidding. So um, if anyone in the room can tell me what language was on Jeff Bard's driver's license. Who said Nomish? You win an SSD from HyperX. Yay! Suits me excited. Yay! <laughs> it's like my Pee Wee Herman impression or something. Thanks, Carlos. That's Carlos Mora, one of our designers. Ninja. <laughs> People call him Ganinja, which I don't get. <laughs> and for our second prize, which goes hand in hand with us saying thank you to you. Happy anniversary to all of our EverQuest 2 players. So while you clap for yourselves, keep an eye on that image. Honestly, thank you. And thanks to the dev team, too. We'll have them come up in a minute. So the first person who can tell me the actual name of the red colored sword in the background? Oh, wow. You win. 64 gig Hyper X. What is it? Thumb drive? Cool. Thank you. I knew we wouldn't be able to trick you guys. What's the sword? It's Atiok. So, Soul Fire. Yeah. Can you turn on Carlos's mic? He'll give you all the nerdy details. <laughs> so basically they are, it's the Kinos Claymore, Claymore uh, the, the Rowanthier versions of the Kinos Claymore, Claymore uh, and Soulfire. Because we thought it would be relevant, right? We didn't want to put, uh, to be honest with you, we didn't want to put Antonia and Lucan on another logo. <laughs> um, and we thought that would be way cooler. So um, with that, I want to invite the devs. We've had them kind of sitting in the corner behaving themselves for the moment. To invite any one of you to come up and ask a couple questions. We have a few minutes. Um, yeah, come on if up, guys. Just, um, so you could line up along the side here behind the camera. Robert, uh, get back and there. And you can ask your questions. Carlos, up here and we'll can, let's introduce these awesome people. These are the most incredible team in the world.